Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another Boston Greeks podcast. We are back with an amazing show. And I say amazing because we did uh, uh, a round one before, and this is actually round two, the sequel, uh, break into Electric Boogaloo, whatever you want to call it. This is the second episode because we had such a great feedback. Uh, people were so excited about this. I, we, we got a lot of feedback, a lot of likes, a lot of follows. Like it, it was just awesome for us as a podcast. And it was great for me and for Foti uh, because we got together with some people that we, we really care about, we really like, friends, uh, people that meant a lot to us, people that meant a lot to the Greek community. I mean, I can't stress this enough. These are the guys that put Boston on the map as a Greek scene. And, you know, we want to welcome everybody back. But first, I want to say hello to my co-host, Foti Stamos. What's up, Foti? What up, Ari? Uh, dude, another another exciting episode. I'm super excited. And you just mentioned something about these gentlemen were part of the uh, the scene, right? But, but it goes beyond that. These gentlemen are also responsible for a lot of people's um, weddings and and. You know, we took people from being single to our events, getting connected, getting married. And then these individuals were also part of that experience as well. So it goes beyond just the scene of the of the nightclubs. But in any event, uh, it's uh, it's great to have the gentleman back. I'm surprised and, and I'm excited that we're able to get everybody back again because with everyone's busy life and things that are going on. Well, I, we said this before and I'm going to say it again. A lot of great opportunities. COVID has been a horrible, horrible thing, but... A lot of great opportunities have actually come up because of COVID. And I think the reason we could get everybody together at once is because, you know, they're, they're, they're not out there spinning, you know, doing this, doing that. Like, you know, people generally are home at night, which, you know, that's fine. But it gives us the opportunity to get everybody together, which we're really happy about. Excellent. Well, let me welcome the, the boys to, to the segment. So tonight, once again, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. We have with us Chris Parayos, aka El Greco. We also we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna after you do the introduction, we're gonna go and, and actually yeah, yeah, get absolutely. a recap of the names because because some of these are good stories. Uh, I also want to uh, welcome uh, Dimitri Sotiropoulos, aka DJ Seven, <laughs> and next to Seven, Mr. Arthur Marcos, aka DJ Thriller. Thriller. And, and next yeah. we have our, our main man here, Mr. Uh, Peter Sukleris, a.k.a. DJ Sukleris. And Sukleris. alongside with DJ Sukleris, we've got George Kotsomanis, a.k.a. DJ Manis. And ending off with our boy, John Spiridakos, the a.k.a. will leave it uh, as a mystery <laughs> as we get into this segment. But gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us again. It's been a pleasure, and we look forward to tonight's episode with you. Awesome. All right. So how should we start this off? Do you want to, you want to, you want to jump into saying about the names? I think that yeah. would be kind of a cool thing. Everyone has that question at the top of their head. Like, how did you come up with that? And we had this conversation before, right? So everyone has a DJ name that they went by. And then so we'll, 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 curious, we'll, I'm we'll, curious on Thriller first. I want to start with Thriller because that one's, that one's, you know, just got, got that little <clears throat> to it. And I know it's, yeah, it's good. you know what? And, and, and for a long time, I always thought it might be a little too edgy. But, you, know, <laughs> were you like beating people down thriller and like, were you, like a book you know what you know what you know what man like <laughs> it's sometimes it's hard to present yourself as a professional when you're like yeah my name is dj thriller and they're like what like, thriller. i'm like yeah i mean I'm you're no a dj ER. you need that you need that name but, you need that like but you know what this is so i mean just the history of what the name was the name came from back when i was like a teenager and I, everyone had aol and then you pick your screen name so my screen name was you know, AGM, so those were my first initials, and then Thriller. So that was like something I probably heard in the Biggie song or something. It was like Thriller. Oh, oh Michael Jackson, because I was a big Michael Jackson fan, so I was like Thriller. But not Thriller, awesome. it was Thriller. So Because you're Boston. Because I'm from Boston or whatever. I was going to be a little more hip-hop. But, but before I was a DJ, people, because I would use that email, and I would like, you, people know me from online, I would just start to be known, be known as Thriller. There's no like... Even before, like I was you know, a DJ, so like when I started becoming a DJ, and I was like, all right, that's naturally that's gonna be my name. But it's funny because the, the people that out there that did never even knew my first name because I was just Thriller, you know. And I come from a large family too because we all had the same same first and last name. So they were just like, all right, if well, you had a nickname, they were gonna use it. 
So, so, so your dad, your dad is like, "Ella thrilla, ti canis." Yeah, now, and it, it's like all thrilla. So, who's that all thrilla? So, <laughs> it helped us grow you know, up. Them. You know what, I, still, I, I still call you thrilla. One time, I was like, "Yeah, hey, you know, I want to maybe, you know, it's just so I can, when I started doing a lot of more mobile weddings and stuff." But now, but then I realized, right? People know me by that name, and I'm just gonna embrace it. I'm gonna use it, and then I and love then, it. I when I when I first people would say to me, "Yo, you're from Lynn. Do you know Thriller?" <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, right? <laughs> like, you got to know him. His name's Thriller. And I'm like, Thriller? Yeah, like, like, dude, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. They don't even know then, my, don't even know and my then, first name. You know, I found out who Thriller was. I was like, ah, the Marcos? <laughs> and I was like, yo, you know, that that's a <laughs> good point. That's a good point, Peter. And I, I think Chris, Chris knows what I'm going to say here. But we did a party in uh, Philadelphia. And... Uh, I remember these dudes coming up. They're like, oh, thrillas, I never, oh, thrillas, oh, thrillas. <laughs> and I was like, yo, are they talking about Arthur? And, and, they're, and, and they're like, yo, yo, oh, DJ Thrilla. I was like, who, he has a name over here, huh? What's going on? <laughs> like, that was cool. Yeah, that was so, I mean, yeah so I ended up, you know, it, it ends up good for marketing and stuff. It kind of distinguishes myself a little bit, but, you know, you know, it's not, it's, Sometimes it's like, you know, your grown ass man, they call him you Thriller. I'm like, uh, yeah, but you know what? Yeah. Thriller, uh, it, it, it really does fit you. Like, I, I could not think of you as not being Thriller. Like, I just yeah. couldn't. Like, it's just, it's just part of you now. Yeah, yeah your name yeah, definitely, your, your, your name definitely stuck. Yeah. Like, you're the only one who really held it, who's something that's not a rendition of your name. Yeah. Like, yeah that's that i give you i give you credit for that because well let, then let's segue let's segue <laughs> to you dimitri so yeah. you at one point yeah. were were dj7 right? i was so that and now you funny. just go by dj dimitri right and i think thriller put a good uh, uh a start to that is like once i be became a lot more serious about the private event space um like i just i felt like i just needed to go by my name Personally. Well, 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 we'll start off telling us. Yeah, so where the seven name came Seven. Where it's funny, I was I was on Nahant Beach with my sister, and we were like brainstorming together what name because this is when George and I had just started. Yeah. Now my last name didn't have a great ring to it like George's when you cut it short. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. And I remember we, I had, I was just turning 17 the next year. And I, that's why I decided seven was always a number that I really liked. So people have always asked me this question, but there's not much more to it than that. Um, yeah, but that's still cool because I, I, I like the number seven. I mean, you know, I, all my screen names, everything I've ever done always had a seven in it. Uh, yeah. So I always identify with seven. Um, and I, I just did. thought DJ seven sounded pretty cool. Like I, I thought yeah. that was a really cool DJ name. I liked it. I, I, I think for me in the, and where I was in my life at the time, I loved having like the street name and, I, and it worked well being in like the club scene. Um, but again, as I, as I kind of grew older, I strayed away from it for the past, like maybe 10 years or so, but I still, you know, it's still fun. It's all, it's on all the CDs that we made it's, and things still like on that. my phone as DJ seven. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of Same you guys here. still call me that. <laughs> it's in my phone as seven as well. I mean, I, I feel like always, whenever I see your yeah. face, seven will always be like the first thing I think of. Right, right. And, you know, we've all, we made so many flyers with it on it so that, yeah, I definitely, uh, I'll never forget that, you know, the times I was using it. It's just something that, you know, I, 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 I kind of dropped after a while when I kind of changed what I was doing in the DJ world. Which makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. <laughs> Fot is showing us his uh, phone with DJ Seven. <laughs> All right. Um. So so let's go to uh let's go to uh uh Chris, because he had uh, he had you went by a couple of names, right? Well, you guys had like a group name with John, but let's talk about your solo names first. Uh, I had a lot, man. That <laughs> I think my my first one was DJ Valantis. Yes, I remember. I don't know that. If you yeah, remember yeah. that. I did a lot of the, the Greek stuff under that name. Um, and then I kind of got out of the Greek stuff for a while and uh, started focusing more on just house and hip hop. Um, and uh, so then I had another name. It was uh, DJ Psycho C. 
Wait, I don't remember that. Uh, I, remember. That was, uh, I did my Dutch. That was my Dutch house phase. Uh, I remember what house. Uh, Dutch what? house. I had DJ Panic. Panic's my uh, favorite. That was that was my hip hop. My hip hop. I, I think I remember that. Uh, I was known as the prophet for a while from uh, Manolo's message board uh, of, uh, at venue. Uh, and then uh, at the end, my last name that stuck for a while was El Greco. And I think I said it last episode, um, I was always into Latin music, uh, whether it was like the original Spanish reggae, El General, um, the Latin house, the Strictly Rhythm Latin house. Um, I just, I just, I remember it was when we first started working with Spiro. He was promoting uh, the first Greek night we were going to do. And I was like, man, I'm going to make a reggaeton CD, you know, <laughs> because it's so hot right now. And I got all the gyms. And um, which, by the way, my wife was a huge fan of your reggaeton CDs. Yeah. Yeah. So so I was like, you know what, man, I'm just going to I'm going to mix it up. You know, I love Latin music. I'm Greek. El Greco. You know, what, 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 better, what better name, you know? It just, uh, it fit my personality at the time. And then it just, it, it stuck. You know, everybody started knowing me as Greco. Uh, I, I, so I have, I have in my head, which I thought was a DJ name, but now I'm starting to think I remember it incorrectly and I'm just literally remembering your screen name on AOL or Professor. <laughs> you never went by DJ that was just, No, no, that was just a screen name. <laughs> yeah. Thriller, I, I just created like DJ EGM Thriller like a week before, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, also thought that was a cool screen professor, name. Professor, right? Not Professor, Professor. 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 Oh, professor. I thought there was like 10 DJs that came out of Lynn. Come to find out there was like four of us plus all the names. <laughs> oh, Chris. Hey, okay. hey. I was like, we got 10 coming out of Lynn. It's like, oh, no, no. Five of those is Chris. I was like, all right. All right. All right so we, we, got, we got the guys who had like the actual screen name. So uh, we're going to ask Mani, but I mean, it's, it's kind of clear, but it, I don't know. Is there any more to it than you just cutting your last name? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't even remember... <laughs> <laughs> thinking about what it should be i think i just like it was either going to be godzam or manis like no one or the godzam, other. no no please. no godzam's a turkish word so yeah. really not <laughs> i was gonna say mani has a nice flow to it like uh dimitri said it's like it, it fits really well like just yeah. mani boom yeah, the, yeah. Means, the only bad like part mania crazy too like well, the yeah. only bad part, people think I'm from Mani. That's the only thing. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. As a Greek that's DJ, yeah. 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 My mom's family. Family. <laughs> family. So, so then let's jump to to John. John, if you if you well, first of all, tell us if you had any solo names or any DJ names. I mean, I did every now and then. Like it was just more for like some mixtapes that I made. Um, but these mixtapes didn't really go anywhere. You know, like I said earlier, it was like. Well, that well you you gave me one and like i said it was the number one mixtape ever for me yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that means something uh i went by dj junior um oh yeah that was uh, <laughs> what was the other one um Jay, Mello, your, first, you said, your, your first greek mixtape was dj rio dj rio yeah because yeah. my my like i'm i was baptized yanis nectarios so i cut nectarios oh. and rio so that was that was one of the names that I had. That's a cool little nickname. It's not bad. Uh, so it's Rio, uh, J Mello, and where, where did J Mello come from? Oh, that, that, like, was, that, that was that was like our yeah. earlier hip hop days, you know. That's when like, you were like a Portuguese DJ. <laughs> <laughs> there was J Mello, right? There was a couple of rappers with the name like that. So 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 since okay, so that's that's good. A history of you. So why don't you, John, tell us where the duo name of Freakas came from when you were with Chris? The Freakas, uh, that came from our, uh, that track that we made, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, we sampled something from Cypress Hill. It goes, the, I'm the Freaka, the one that freaks the funk. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so maybe Chris oh, started. man, the Freakas, that, the Freaka, that sounds dope. <laughs> you started. guys are on iTunes as the Freakas. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did all, we did all of our remixes for X Mix under the Freakas. We were on uh, X Mix, the remix uh, service. 
as the freak is too. Uh, so it still lives on. on. What's that? There's a website called discography.com, I think it's called. Disc- yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, Discogs. We were able to. Is X Mix still around? I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen much of it. I don't think so. This is every everybody's like able to just do it kind of on their own. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, back then there there wasn't there wasn't a lot of uh, like uh, you know audio desktop studios. It was it was still kind of rare, so there, there weren't yeah. many people doing it. Wait, yeah, so you so so again, I'm I'm the outsider here. What you guys are talking about right now? What what is that? What was X? It was a remix service that was really really good, and and uh, both these guys were on it. That was that's. That's yeah, because like they did some Van serious Helden. production work, right? Armand Van Helden started there. And you yeah. would think on his first couple of albums, it was still uh, released under X-Mix Records. That was Neil Petricone's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. Then, oh, so that, that's actually really cool. Yeah, it was like, like, I had no idea about this. this. Like, we were like blown away when we... It was our buddy, DJ Chaos, who I think we mentioned in the last uh, recording here, but... Uh, our buddy started working with them and he was like, Hey, why don't you guys like, we would, we would like play him some stupid remixes that we make. You know? And then there was one that he kind of liked and he's like, Oh, that's pretty good. He's like, why don't I, I don't know, I'll submit it and see what they think. And they and needed, loved it they needed more. They needed, you know, remixers. And so we kind of started talking to them and, and we got on there. That's and just awesome. like everything else, it became a job, you know? And yeah. Like, I was going to say like you, you guys, <laughs> You guys are, you know, I mean, everybody here is a professional because you've all been paid for your work. But I'm just saying, like, that's a really cool, like, thing to have under your belt. It was. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. And I, if, I, if I remember correctly, like, when we were shooting um, GBTV, the segment on uh, Greek Star, right? All of you, uh, uh, Thrilla, John, Chris, and the other guys, we were in a studio. And I remember you guys telling me about how you guys... Uh, you guys were doing stuff in the studio, but then I don't know if this has something to do with the studio, but you guys did remixes for uh, DJ Cena or somebody. Oh, no. John Cena, the wrestler. DJ, what did I say? DJ Cena. DJ, DJ Cena. <laughs> Everybody's a DJ yeah. now. Yeah, John Cena. And you guys were like, well, you guys done, you did a couple of things for John Cena and his album was like on the charts. Yeah. And I was yeah. telling you guys, you guys are producers that are on the charts his themes we actually did the engineering the audio engineering on on his theme song we brought dun, it dun, dun, dun. yeah and we and we brought it to sony um we went to to new york sony studios and uh we saw we saw the album get mastered that's which awesome. was really cool yeah, that's cool. That, that that's something as a dj that sticks in your mind as a as a great memory right and we each had like one song that we produced that I don't think made it to like the real album. There was he made like a whole made it, you, you underground made it album. to the real to to the to the final release the make make it loud. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's awesome. That, that studio Adi, where you guys recorded the the video. Yeah. That was our buddy DJ ba- Chaos. Oh, that was Chaos Base Camp. I think I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was that was a great day. That that was a fun was day. That was cool. <laughs> All right. Awesome. 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 And then, you know, the name, the DJ name that I'm most curious about. I know. How, DJ would I <laughs> how, how did I think of that name? <laughs> Dude, I'm dying to find just, out how you came up with that. So, so sleepless <laughs> nights. No, <I'm> just <laughs> you know, what's funny is, um, I don't know, like, I, I, did I ever think of coming up with a tag name? I did, but you know, people saying like, you know, Pistol Pete and this and that. And I was like, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just going by Solaris, you know? And I remember when I got the job at Avalon, um, about two months in, no one, no one, you know, when I first, when I first got the job there, you, 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 you get excited to go in and, and play. And I felt like really pumped and like, this is crazy. And it was like, oh, what's your name? And I was like, oh, my name's Solaris, my name's Solaris. And, and no one really embraced you in there until you were in a couple of months in. Because that was like a revolving door over there. People would come in for two weeks, three weeks, they'd get five, four weeks, you know. So after about two months, John Lyons comes up to me, who was the main, you know, one of the main owners there from the Lyons group. 
Mm -hmm. And he never talked to anyone. Like he was a very, I don't know, an intriguing guy. Like, you know, he would walk by me, never say nothing. One day he comes up to the DJ booth. He goes, can I talk to you for a minute? And I'm thinking, oh shit, what did I do wrong? Did I play mm -hmm. something I didn't like? You know, he goes, um, we got to change your name. I go, why? He goes, I don't like it. He goes to me, he goes, here's the deal. He goes, you change your name. You got the job. You don't change your name. You got to go like that. You know, wow. I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, just, just think about it. So I said, don't listen, John, with all due respect. I said, that's my name, you know? And I never forgot that. I was like, that's my name, dude. You know, he didn't, he didn't say you got to go, but he, maybe, you know, it wasn't that harsh, but it was kind of like, you have to get a name or else it's not going to work. It was kind of yeah, like, he was kind of pushing you towards, yeah. and, I, and and it, for me, it was almost like, you know what? I, it's a Greek name. I'm st I, I was even more like a piece of my I was like, I'm not changing my name. <laughs> I was like, you know what? People know me by that name, John. I said, it's going to be a disservice to you. If I change my name, I've been spinning for many years. People know me. If I just get a different tag, I was like, I, I ain't doing it. Sorry. But you know what, on? Peter, yeah, your, your last name, like has like a nice flow to it. All right. right. Like it's, it's like, it's not like, you know, Ooh, DJ Caloyeropoulos, <laughs> where everybody's going to leave immediately if uh, you announce that. That's why I now go by DJ Bufo Montesi. So you guys all heard that here first. But no, Suhleris, Suleris, Suhleris, however you want to say it, like that has a nice flow. Like that sounds like a good, it's almost like you did pick it. Well, I, I had no choice. That was the name. Though. <laughs> yeah, like, no, it's cool that you stuck to your guns. Sometimes I, I did. And I'm proud of that. You know, I look back and I'm glad I kept, you know, I, I mean, look, I probably would have been fine with whatever, but I was, I just liked it. I was like, that's my name. I've been using it forever. All my records had Solaris on it. I wasn't going to fucking change all my records now. You know, I'm just kidding. You know, you're, so, you're, uh, you're like the, the Will Smith of the Greek DJs. You just keep Peter your became, name so everybody knows it. When Peter became legend status, and they, he they, yeah. he was talked about. People people would say um, DJ Solaris. Yeah. Thought it was S O L A R I S. Solaris. People. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> people call me Solaris. Yeah. Solaris. Did, did, did they mistake that with like the word Solaris, like yeah. Solaris? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Called Solaris. Solaris. That's kind of cool too. Solaris. It was, and and Solaris. was um. I remember when we, when we first cut a, a demo tape on Kiss, not a, a, a demo commercial on Kiss 108 for Avalon Friday nights, you know, and it was this really cool. I got to go into the Kiss 108 studios and, and, um, and, and mix live. I was actually mixing live the, uh, the 60 second cut. And the guy behind was like, what the hell are you doing? We're going to cut all this up on a, on a, you know, on a computer and, and, and a reel to reel. I was like, no, I got this live dude. I'm like, bop, 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 bop. And I'm doing this live and he's freaking out. So they, they, they do the thing and it was like DJ so hilarious. And I was like, no, no, no. The H used to throw everyone off. On the, I was like, forget the H, it's DJ Solaris. So other than that, it was all right. It was good. But I, you know, there was a couple of names people were running in the beginning, but I just, I just stuck with that name and that's it. No, that's it but you know what? I've never heard any other name for you. What, yeah, you mentioned Pistol P. What else? No, no. The people were, were sit, telling me to do this, and I had no interest in doing that. <laughs> yeah, I know. DJ I just Pistol can't P. can't picture you with that name. You know? That was it. DJ no, Sears. man. It would be a totally different scenario right now. He might not even be here with us right now if he went by <laughs> DJ Pistol P. I know. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> That's too funny. All right. So, okay. That thank thank you guys for 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 giving us that awesome info. Um, so now let's uh let's kind of jump into uh something that you know I've been thinking about since last time because last time when we recorded the first episode we talked about you know some really great memories and I shared like a great memory that I had uh, just a magical moment that I shared with uh Chris and John that was like a perfect storm. So I was thinking about like. You know, me as a, a club goer, I, I wouldn't call me a promoter, but like I was involved in the, the, the Greek scene and the parties and stuff um, as like a web person. I, I mean, I don't even know how you connect those things. But anyway, um, I had some great moments. I had some horrible moments. I mean, I could tell you stories of like amazing things that happened, uh, be it with friends, be it with music, be it with you know, a pretty girl that I met, like just cool things. And then I remember disastrous nights of like everything just went wrong and it was horrible. And so I, I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know, these guys 
have been DJing at like amazing events, events that like so many people have memories of. So I'm sure these guys have memories that are great memories that are like pretty bad. I mean, just to give an example, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to steal this story, but there was a night where I had, it, it's very unlike me, but I had a little bit too much to drink in one of these Greek nights. No way. And yeah, right. I actually have a video and actually if I'm inclined, I might splice the video into this uh, recording, but it's me. It's John and Chris, I believe, put me on the mic at the end of the night. And it was just horrible from the get-go. It's like me going, everybody, thanks for coming up. Like, you could hear how horrible, how horribly drunk I was. And then the video cuts to uh, the girl I was dating at the time with like a real sour puss on her face going, Ari's so <laughs> drunk. He's such an asshole. And then out of nowhere, you see Chris run down the stairs going, yo, Ah, he spilled beer all over my uh, my CDs. Like, what the hell? And they're like, "Yeah, he's an asshole. Yeah, he's an asshole." <laughs> so, like that—that's like an example of a night gone wrong. Like, do you guys have like nights that you remember as like amazing nights? And do you guys have nights that you remember where where shit just went bad? So let let's hear some of these stories. Anybody volunteer to go first, or should I just go in order? All right. Chris, we're gonna get with you first. I don't. Well, that that sounded like uh, <laughs> one of my disaster nights. Which club was when that? When I had to re-record, all, all, re-burn all my my CDs. Uh, For real? Yeah. Well, oh, not all of them. Man, I'm <laughs> sorry, <laughs> man. <laughs> you would, we, you know, we really have to show this video because we caught this as it happened, and you know, Chris, Chris is a pretty laid-back dude, and he doesn't generally get really mad. And he wasn't, it wasn't like he came down and he was like ripping mad. He had still kind of a little bit of a smile on his face, but he's like, yo, I didn't just know all this beer on my stuff. And I just laughed and laughed when I saw this. And I was like, oh my God, I remember that. But is that, is that really one of your That's worst like impersonation of me? <laughs> how about a, how about a fond memory? How about something that was like magical to you? I mean, there would have been a bunch of magical moments i guess i imagine as a dj you guys would have a lot of magical moments anything you yeah. want to talk about anything you want to like mention i think i don't know i i just um there's just some nights that stand out where i felt like there was such a strong connection with the crowd it was like almost like we were reading each other just the you you know where everybody's just in it you're in it you know it's just like you're in the zone there were a few memorable nights like that both in the American scene and the Greek scene. Yeah. Um, what about yeah, gentlemen? Think... Anybody opened up for? Um, I mean, during the concert times, were there any moments where some of us were, or some of you were actually part of the opening for any of the major singers from Greece that were hosting concerts at it the was, time? There was never openings for us back then. It was always the after party that was huge. Yeah. After party, yes. And we used All right, to, you know what? Um, Let's. Let's talk about let's let's do that question after. Let let's just finish with this one. All right. I got a story actually, something that I can add. All right, let's do it. All right. So when you talked about uh I wouldn't say like a, a bad night, but I have a funny story that involves George and I. So when George and I started, it was probably around like 2005, 2000, 2004, 2005 this happened. And we like when anybody starts, so like you don't have that many events, right? So we're like, hey, we'll take anything. We'll do any type of gig. So I was listening at the time to a lot of like Greco's reggaeton CDs. Like the Maslow Dose was like my, my thing, right? <laughs> and I used to be friends with a bunch of the Dominican kids in Salem because everyone else is pretty much from Lynn. I grew up in Salem. So we were a pretty heavy Dominican population. And George was working at Captain's. I was working at Middleton House and I, and I texted him and I, I probably didn't text him. I probably called him because texting probably wasn't even <laughs> like, was new. I think we had a pay per text at the time. So I called him <laughs> and I was like, George, I got us a gig tonight after Captain's. Are you in? And he's like, where is it? I'm like, all right. So it's in the point in Salem at my oh boy's my house, reggaeton. <laughs> all night all we have to do is bring like Guns. a console and exactly. the speakers are already there because another dj had like would like 
had already started. But like we we were super in tune with reggaeton at the time, like from like Greco and Thrilla and the Freakas, like that was our thing, right? And George is like, "Are you sure, man? Like, are you sure? <laughs> like, are you sure this is a good idea?" And I'm like, "Well, what else are we gonna do? Like, we don't have any gigs, so let's do it. Like, we're gonna take it." It was obviously unpaid, by the way. Like, this was just exposure gig. Oh, you guys are like real deal right there. Yeah. So he gets out of captains. I have my gear from I come out of the pizza place. We meet at the place in Salem. And again, as I'm driving up, George is like, dude, are you sure about this? Like <laughs> the whole thing was sketchy. Just like are everything. You sure, right. And I'm like, of course, man, I promise you nothing's going to happen. Like it's going to be fine. So we roll in like smoke everywhere. <laughs> we, we set up the gig and we just start ripping it like reggaeton after reggaeton. And people are looking at us like, who are these like, non-dominicans yeah. like to this level of reggaeton but it was cool because it's what we really liked so we're having a blast it's a great night and then like you start to see the crowd just like make a massive circle some dude like whipped out a gun oh, okay geez. and i remember looking at george and he's like i told you man i told you we shouldn't have taken this gig so i could see george doing that he was so pissed at me so we like <laughs> unhook the stuff right and like we're we have the 19 inch rack like running to the car outside <laughs> to try to beat it before the cops come and i just remember the whole time hearing him be like dude i can't believe you took me here why did we do this <laughs> we get in the car we take off but i think so that was just like a funny story but like it was definitely something i'll never forget no oh, man that, that's, of it. that's exactly that's exactly the story yeah. that i wanted to hear like that's awesome <laughs> I, like I, I was sucked into that and i could totally picture you guys and yeah. i could totally pick first of all i could picture george when you said we i got a gig tonight i could picture a lot of people going yeah man but i could picture george going where yeah <laughs> yeah george, i can picture george because george is very methodical he kind of yeah. wants to lay it all out <laughs> make sure everything's cool you know but uh I, I, oh man so no one got well, shot dude i mean i, I would have been a little bit better if someone got shot in the no, leg. No, <laughs> got shot on the leg what was he George doing like showing off or something you like you off say a you gun? Like ran out of music because you didn't know like what they knew for reggaeton i didn't expect a gun to be <laughs> yeah, yeah no, i thought no, they were making a circle drawn. around you yeah, you, they were, what you, know, you should have done was you should have grabbed the gun, shot George in the leg, then you would have become famous <laughs> like gangsta <laughs> reggaeton dudes real quick overnight. It's telling you, man. Yeah, I remember hey. like people they were helping us like get out of there. Yeah, like, hey. like you guys so, need to go. Yeah, but do you think there was a, did, nothing happened there, right? It was just no, somebody like, showing I, off or something. No, like I called and I I called the friend my friend Manny after to ask what was happening, and he said like you know someone beefed with someone else's girl, and you know no one was shot but it was also oh, so so he flashed a gun because he was pissed not just because he was like drunk Correct. and dancing and taking yeah, a gun yeah out. yeah but then oh, like shit. once when people started seeing it remember we're in a house we're yeah, in a yeah, club yeah. so like everybody's just shuffling around like hitting the street going through the doors while george and i are trying to unplug oh, and geez. carry gear out equally as fast so um, hey, so, look, so I, I and i used to i used to uh go down to the point because that's where i learned how to do a lot of my production I used to, I linked up with some Dominican kids and I used to go around there. And that place is like your place. Hold you on, Drilla, hold on. <laughs> you got to tell everybody who, who these dudes actually were that you hooked up with. That, that double A guy who was, oh, yeah. like, he, he was part of the original Looney Tunes and yeah, really? some Looney yeah. Tunes got big and they made it. Yeah. So studio I, when I was, this guy, this guy actually produced a track with Jay-Z. And wow. at the time, I, I linked up with somebody in Lynn, and I told, I wanted to learn, and I was they knew I was doing a DJ, and I was doing production, like yo, you should meet this guy. So I'm like, all right, meet this guy, and they're like, this this guy's name is Double A, or A A Aaron, and um, he's like, yeah, you know, I, I work. I was like, can I come to the studio and just watch what you guys do? Because at the time, Chris Chris wasn't using uh, FL Studio Fruity Loops; yeah, they were Fruity using that, the Mac based stuff. And I was like jumping up to this Fruity Loops because I was like, all right, this is a new stuff I want to learn. This is what all the reggaeton is made. And I ended up getting in the studio. This guy literally made a track with Jay-Z on it, with El Bambino on it. Like, he made that track. And I'm sitting there watching them produce the track. And I'm in the studio now. And um, this is, like, in the point, in the basement. And I'm the... I'm the I, no one's no English at all is being spoken. All Spanish. So it's just me. <laughs> and I'm just watching them do stuff. And they're just looking at me like... 
you know, like, like I'm like, like smoking weed. Everyone's like, just like people in and out, girls, guys, <laughs> like babies. It's like, <laughs> and I'm talking about a studio that probably costs, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It, it, and it's right down there, the recording, everything. So it, it was like, like, when I first started, and I learned so much of them. I, we exchanged stuff. I get, I gave them Greek music. They listened to it. Like, they were like, oh, this is cool. We we're talking about music, like how reggaeton and the sito is the same beat. And it's like all like the same rhythms and stuff like that. And a lot of them, like, you know, is that true though? Things, Does reggaeton have the same beat as sito? Yeah, same rhythm. Yeah. Exactly ah, same rhythm. Right. The guy, that guy, that, that, that guy, the producer actually, because he lived in Lynn, he used to go down to the festival, the, the St. George Lynn Festival. And he told me, he goes, yeah, he goes, I was, I was there, I was eating some Greek food and I was sitting there, I was watching the band. And I'm like, he was like, are they playing reggaeton right now? <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, he's like, he goes, that beat, it was the same exact beat. I go, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same exact thing. So, and then, and then at that point you started hearing it in Greece and all these Greek songs, cause they picked up on it in Greece and all these songs now, it used to be Sito, now we're just like straight up reggaeton beats. Yeah. You know, the heavy drums, the heavy, the heavy, the heavy kicks and the snares. And it kind of evolved from there. And I felt like we we seen it like we seen like, you know, before all that happened in Greece, we were like in it, you know, I would say, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if it's like, because I mean, we're all from Salem or Lynn or the well, surrounding area, started. but reggaeton played a huge part in a lot of our musical like background. Well, you'd walk down the street, every car was just yeah. bumping, you yeah. know, bumping it. And that's where Even, it all started because the Looney Tunes are from Lynn and they're the ones that popularized reggaeton you know i mean there's all there was a lot of he- there was heavy influence in Lynn and, and salem with that that, that reggaeton so yeah. all right so so this podcast is awesome because we're learning a lot like i had no idea about this this, yeah, this is I mean, new that, look, this is new to me right now yeah i mean that yeah, was no, that was back crazy. in those days when we were we were always we were making connections we were going you know seeing people different studios you know everybody was kind of doing their own their own thing but like you know you're getting the influence especially when you're in lynn because you would hear you know all these different crews doing music go to hip-hop studios and we had it lined up we had like a greek track a greek a greek artist to do a track with a reggaeton artist from the from the north shore and it was we had some a lot of stuff lined up it didn't pan out but we were we were trying to connect a lot of those a lot of those um that music too well, I mean, in, in your histories, there is a lot of connection between different musical genres. Like, I remember uh, you guys, uh, who was it, reggae, was it? We had a reggae artist that Chris used to work with. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nachulis. Yeah, we did. Um, the Dinto, uh, Dini, the remix. Yeah, the Dini, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really good, man. Yeah. We put him on, um, what's the girl that won the Eurovision? The number one remix, too. Number, number one, one, yeah, Elena Le- 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 Paparizu. Paparizu, 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 yeah. That, too, the, the song that she won, I forgot the name of it. Yeah, my, my number one. My right? number one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, I remember that. That was, that was Dude, awesome. We even had a live performance at uh, Rumor. With, yeah, with naturalists. Uh, naturalists perform there. Yeah, with 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 the guys with Stully Stull and his buddies. So let me let me plug let me plug Boston Greeks real quick because I have the picture gallery from Rumor. I have video clips. It's not up yet, but look out for it. <laughs> just just want to sure, throw that plug in. Make sure you filter those those pictures, please. Not it, Forty <laughs> makes me filter all the pictures of him, just so you guys know. <laughs> So that's awesome. All right. So we heard, we heard, we heard some of these great stories. Anybody else? Anybody else want to so jump good. in? With so that? listen, you know, I'll say one thing. I remember just along the journey, right? There's, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate. There's times when you think you're going to go out and have the best night and it just sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and there's times when you're dragging and you, and, and you know, I was like, I don't really want to do this gig. And I go, and that was the best night. You yeah. Know? I'm going to say, Peter, that I think I think that is very accurate in, in life, because when you yeah. have high expectations, you can they almost don't never meet, meet the them. You and when you have no expectation, it's almost always better. Exactly. And, I, and I've done so many gigs, man, where I'm like, oh, this is going to be the best gig in the world. And I'm like, this gig sucks. It's horrible. <laughs> I can't get them to grind. You're like, just you like just you're fighting all night. And then you do some gigs that are like, I don't want it to end either, you know? Because yeah. a lot of times, especially private parties, you know, you, you're looking at your, your watch. You're like, when is this gig going to end? And then there's those parties where you don't want it to end. Yeah. And there's sometimes yeah. where they want you to go an extra half an hour, an extra hour. And you're like, yeah, it's 500 bucks an hour. I used to throw some ridiculous number out there because I didn't want to stay. 
and they would they would pay you. And then these gigs were like, I don't want no money. I just want to keep on playing for you guys. You guys are awesome, <laughs> you know. And I and I've done gigs, dude. Where I'm I'm listening to all these stories, and I've I've seen people get shot. I've seen guns pull out. <laughs> I've seen people die. I've seen people, what? you know. Oh, I've seen I've I've seen a lot. I've seen people die at gigs. People die, ambulances, cops, gigs over. What, you know, like, 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 like fighting dead, or? Dead. No, uh, fi- fights. I've seen, I've seen private parties with 400 people just go into mayhem and like, <laughs> oh, holy crap, I'm, I'm taking my speakers and, and throwing them in the back so they don't, th- I mean, craziness, uh, you know? Wow. I'm, sure, I'm sure, guys, not that we want to discuss fights, but I'm sure we all have experienced oh, breakouts and fights in a lot of our Greek nights. But, yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but more fun stuff than that, you know, more yeah. fun stuff. But I'm just saying, like, I've seen some crazy stuff. And if I, if I'm going to recall, I'm trying to see that, you know, the question was like your best gig and your worst gig type of thing. I think, I, I think I can think of more good gigs than bad gigs, you know, and I've had some serious journeys over the years where, you know, I mean, I can talk about Avalon gigs. I can talk about some, some fun stuff that, that comes to mind was when, uh, when I was going to Philly a lot. And a lot of times I was bringing uh, Dimitri and Kozamani with me, right? We guys went together yeah. a bunch of times. So I don't know how, yeah. I, I forget what happened. I know Manny, Manny moved out to Atlanta, to, to Philadelphia. He opened up a nightclub. And DJ Manolo for all you people. DJ Manolo, right? Which we're going to have on, on the next session, as, as we said, right? So he's got a lot of cool stories too. So Manny calls me up one time and he's like, dude, you know, I, I, I know you really want to do this, blah, blah, but, but I, I got these Greeks down here. They want to do a Greek night and they're looking for a DJ. And so he's in like, Philly, you said? He's in Philly. Yeah. So there's a good Greek, Greek vibe in Philly. So they're, oh, like, yeah. they're, looking, for, they're looking for a DJ and uh, do you want to do it? And I was like, I don't know, dude. They're like, come on, come on. It's going to be at my club. He owned a beautiful club. Did we play at his club? Did you guys do Was that? Was it called Biblos? We played there, but no, his Manny's was called 114. Ah, uh, okay. I don't know if we played there for the Greek night. But anyway, the first one I did, he flew me out there. I played for it. And, and again, I, I was like, it was one of those gigs where I kind of did it a favor for Manny. Excuse me. I didn't really want to do it. I, my expectation was going to be, this is going to suck. It was awesome. These dudes were so appreciative. It was that, that, that era. It was like 2000 and four, five, six, where they get done. Greek was all mixing in and I, and I was just on top of my game and I was playing stuff and I'm scratching and remixing. And these kids were like, just who the hell are you? You got to do this every week. I'm like, I can't come here every week, man. You know? <laughs> so then, um, you know, they wanted to, they wanted to do it again and again. I was doing it like, I don't know, once every two months, every three months. And I was bringing you guys out. Right. And you guys were yeah. playing too. I yeah. We'd open for you. Yeah. yeah, this was the beginning for them, and I was throwing them out. I'm like, go, 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 go. And they're like, what do we play? I'm like, just play music. Don't worry about it. Go. You know what's interesting, Peter? Um, I, I, we did a party in Philly. I was with uh, Chris and uh, Dimitri. Oh, yeah. And something that stuck out in my head. Oh, and, and Thriller, too. Um, but I think Thriller was a different time, no? Yeah, yeah, we, went twice. Chris, we went down with Sigma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then okay. we went, we so, went yeah, a second Chris and, time. Chris and we went a second time, yeah. But it was something just, that stuck out yeah. in my head is, like, I've been doing Greek nights in Boston for, like, I don't know, like, 10 years at that point. And I'm like, I still see Greeks that I don't even know. And I was like, we did this one Greek night here in Philly, and we were best friends and on a first-name basis with, like, every single person in that club. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's so how it they was, were. It was and fun. I was like, what the hell? This, this truly is the city that was- of brotherly love. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, like, that was one of the, the, the biggest things was when we went down there and then we went to New York and, like, they knew us. Like, they were like, oh, this is Thriller, this is Greco. And at that time, I was like, wow, like, actually, people, people it's, you know, we know that people on the internet knew who we were, but, like, we went down there, like, wow, people were coming up to us, like, yo, this is, like, that track you did or that mix CD you did. And I was like, wow, these people, you know, they don't know us at all, like, as people, just as DJs, and they just love the music, and they appreciated us being down, and that was a big thing. In New York, the same thing. We'd go down there, we'd be walking on the street in Astoria, and they'd be like, hey, Thrilla, Greco! I'm like, I'm like, all right, we're doing something, like, people would know us, and that was, like, a huge thing. And I that felt must like, be, like, an awesome feeling. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? You, could you put a lot of, as a DJ, as, as and, and even doing the music production, we put a lot of hours into it, like, untold hours that, you know, you don't know that we're in your basement, and you're learning, and you're, you're, you're trying to put this track together, and, you know, even me doing do my music uh, remixing, but, like, Chris doing the post-production stuff, and all, a lot of that stuff, that takes a long time, 
and it was when we started seeing people actually like, wow, we, you know, they liked it. It, it was, it was a good feeling. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is worth it. I mean, we, we were going to become millionaires instantly, but like. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, I imagine a while. like a few months, really. I, I imagine you guys sitting on stage or, you know, behind a DJ booth, whatever it is, just wherever you are. I feel like that is similar to the feeling of like an actor like performing and a, a, a singer singing and like just yeah, any fun, sort of man. like yeah, performer performing. I feel like you get that same feel, that that's same what drive. Drives. Yeah, that's what drives us. I think we can all say that we have in common. That's that's what drives us. It's not it was never about the money. It was always about, you know, just entertaining it and, and, and making people have a good time and a fun time, you know, and taking them on a journey. You know what I mean? Like taking them up, taking them down, taking them left, you know, taking a right. And the element of surprise, dropping things that they would never expect, whether yeah. it was that's you cool. Know, you know what that's I mean? Really like, cool. Just, just just taking them on a journey and and taking them back, taking them forward, st- keeping them there. I love going down memory lane and doing quick power sets, like in in five minutes, mixing you know 10, 15 songs, just bang, 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 bang. Yeah, yeah. And, like and like if I if I'm in a car with like three of my friends and I play like a really good song, I'm like. I'm the man. I'm the man <laughs> for my three friends. So I can only imagine like how cool it must Doing feel it when you guys right? really <laughs> connect with the audience and you see hundreds and hundreds of people just jumping up and down and having like the time of their lives. And it's all because yeah. of what you are doing. And, and it's, alcohol it's you doing too, that. <laughs> and alcohol yeah. always helps helps the situation as DJ. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, the best that, feeling that, is when, when, where, when they're in such a vibe and you, you know, you know, you got some songs where you can drop the volume so they can sing along. Yeah. And it's just like the whole place sings along. But see, that, know, that's the, that's the stuff that you DJs, you know, no matter what's going on, no matter how excited you are, or if you've had a few drinks, like you have to be in tune. Okay. This is where I'm going to drop the, the volume because everybody's going to sing along. You got to know that this yeah, is where yeah. we like, really crank it up because everybody's gonna go nuts this is where like you have to know your audience and i think that's a really cool thing that's that truly shows that you guys are connected to the the vibe and the people and it's a really really cool thing and it must feel good when you succeed in that you definitely feed off the energy yeah crowd and, and and it goes both ways right so if that crowd's not feeling it either or you're just not doing something that makes that crowd not feel it afterwards then you feel that negative energy come back too. You know what I mean? So it's like, it goes both ways. Like you can do something that can make that crowd go nuts or you can do something that'll just totally turn them off too. Yeah, it's so sometimes, sometimes, sometimes do that, obviously. What, 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 was, what sucked as a DJ, like you could go to a, a party the week before and play these 10 songs and people were like going nuts. And then you're like, oh, I figured it out. This is the formula. <laughs> yeah. And then you go to the next party and you go, watch this. You play one, no one moves. You play two, no one. That. And that's like getting kicked in the balls uh, and punched in the gut. And that's where champions are made because that's where you got to come out of that and make them dance. And those were right. good nights. You know what I mean? Where, you know, let them, let them, let them kick you in the balls. Let them kick you in the nuts. But you got to, you know, it, it just didn't work. What you did last week didn't work. So you got to reinvent yourself and reinvent yourself. And that was, that was, that was hurtful, but yet the challenge was real fun. But, but the solution came. to all the DJ's problems without with not being able to connect is have drunk Adi in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> because if I'm I in can. that audience, you guys are going to connect and everybody's going to feel it. I'm talking about private parties. I couldn't bring you to a wedding, Adi. That's no. awesome. That's awesome. All right. So, all right. So, so, where so, no matter what you drop, you look like a rock star because yeah. the place is packed like sardines. They're all drunk and you could sing a song and they're going to sing Kumbaya with you and you're still a rock star, you know? There was, there was that, times that, that must be so, honestly, that must be so amazing. Like, I, it, it, it's, it's like, I, I feel, I, I wish I could uh, like have felt that. I mean, friend, you know, you guys are all friends. You guys have all brought me up to the DJ booth and just like standing in the DJ booth is like such a cool feeling. I'm like, I, I'm the man. I'm in I here in the DJ booth. I have a good memory while we're talking about this stuff. Hit it. There was a Greek night at Rumor. It was me and John doing it. 
It was like one of the first ones we started with with Sigma. I think it was like an Easter night or something. And um, and we were playing Greek all night, you know, the, you know, whatever, mixing in some reggaeton, some Arabic, whatever, right? And then um, what we had never done before at a Greek night. Um, I think I know we, what you're going to we say. Were, we were trying to incorporate <laughs> what we were doing at the American nights when we, when everybody was just you know, hammered and, you know, whatever you'd play, they were going to go nuts to. So we got into a, a, a an 80 set and we played ah. Living on a Prayer. Yes, I was going to say night. that. And every yeah. single Greek in there sang yeah. the chorus, dude. It dropped the volume down. Come and on. Singing along. Of course they're going to freaking sing I'll the chord. I, I, hey, I was that that night and I, and I remember it almost broke a barrier of like, you can play other things at a Greek night. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it work. Like, yeah. so like, so when even when I got involved, I'm like, all right, I can we can drop like the five best, you know, pop hip hop songs in the middle somewhere and keep going. But I remember back in the day, it was like strictly Greek music the whole night. And I was like, come on, just play that Biggie song, just play it. And, it, and it would never happen. And then when we, and then, you know, Chris and John, they did that, that first, that night, I was like, dude, it works. Why don't, let's just, it's more that should be played. I'm like, you, you guys, kids, you guys like, disrupted yeah. the whole system. Yeah. Got a great story where it didn't work. <laughs> 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 so again, it was venue, but it was, uh, we were doing a hip hop night. It was a, a separate thing. It was for uh, 617 uh, promotions or whatever they call yeah, the promoters. Um, so we were doing hip hop night and Everybody remembers Big Pimpin', right? Jay Z. Bam, bam, bam. Um, so I, I don't know, like most of you guys know, I play the Doombeck and I listen to a lot of Arabic music, Egyptian stuff, Turkish stuff. And I found the original song that, that um, Timbaland sampled. Uh-huh. It was identical. It was like he just looped it, he took it off of this Egyptian sample and it was identical. And one night we were doing a hip hop night. And we're kind of used to like mixing it up and throwing in like all kinds of different stuff, you know? So I was like, yo, I'm going to drop that original track. <laughs> Chris is like, no, man. <laughs> no, trust me. It's Big Pimpin'. Everybody knows it. So we played Big Pimpin'. I was like, watch, dude, watch, man. It's going to work. It's going to work. <laughs> and then I dropped because like the thing is like the sound quality of the original track is not even... Oh, man, I remember that. Like, Nobody knew what to do. Right? They probably didn't know what to do. They were, like, looking yeah. at each other. And then, like, it just totally goes into this, like, old-school, like, 70s-style Egyptian <laughs> instrumental. The eight-track version. <laughs> and I was like, ah, yeah, you're right, man. It didn't work. I don't even know what we played afterwards. That's but, like, still yeah. awesome, though. I, I love stories like that. I mean, you got to take chances, right? Like, well, if you don't take chances, story. how do you know? I, one more sto- story for John. We had this disco house night. Um, I forget, somewhere in Boston. And uh, it was our first night spending like a disco house night because we had a phase. We went to that disco funk filtered house. Um, and so we were pumped up. <laughs> and there was just two turntables. We just had our records. We didn't even have CDs with us. And uh, it was kind of a small private party. And, and John was like, he was like, he, he was on to mix. And he was like, oh, I'm going to drop this. You know, it was all chill. You know, I was like feeling it. He's mixing literally for like a minute and a half, right? Both volumes up, like full mixes. You can hear a perfect blend. I mean, it was like the perfect mix. I was looking at him. I was like, whoa, I've never heard him do such a long mix. This is at the, uh, what's it called? The SW1, I think it was called. So so John John makes the mix. I'm like, yo, man, that mix was dope. I was like, that's a memorable And he took the needle off of the record that he just mixed. He took the needle off the record he just mixed in. Uh, and he, didn't know, he didn't know what he had done, and everybody was looking at the DJ booth. I'm like, "Yo, put the re- put the needle back on." <laughs> so, so listen, I gotta tell you the same story, right? So, so Yanni, you know, uh, this is at Avalon. He does a mix. He's scared. This is when he's like the first time he's mixing. Second time, he does a perfect blend, just like just like you did. And then he picks up the needle of the song he mixed in, and he's looking at me. <laughs> And he's like, what do I do? I go, put the needle down. And he puts it down. Put the and the song on the record. I'm like, what? I give him a spagnata across the head. I was like, get out of here, dude. I'll never, ever forget that. And this is, you know, 2,000, you know, 1,500 yeah. people. And he just picks it up. 
lucky for him, the people started like chanting. And they thought he did it on purpose. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I go put the needle down. <laughs> he puts it back down. So the, these are kind. These are good stories of like uh, what we would consider like a total like fuck up. Do you guys have any like stories of really fucking something up? live in front of an audience all the time if anyone tells you they don't like that's a oh, lie right uh, well, well, how how because you know obviously like Fati and i we don't really understand how a dj can fuck, i mean we've heard that's, djs that's fuck up, but we don't know one. how so how how did you guys do that about so what? It's, it, the, the, what we just said is a classic mix yeah, up stop the music probably yeah. Yeah. you yeah, stop yeah. the stop wrong the music on the wrong you hit the wrong button on the CD player or something, right? Or... Yeah, playing the wrong, you know. So I mean... that, that's like rule number one for DJs is like, yeah. do not stop Keep the, the music. music. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> I remember, Ari, we have, we've had nights um, at El Panino and so forth where the equipment had overheated. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I and then, played and that. They, they yeah. couldn't get the music back on for like 15 minutes. And oh, then... no. And th that didn't happen once. It happened often. So there were moments where we had severe technical difficulties. There was actually a night I did for you, Footy, at Umbria. And I remember I was using my turntables with Serato. You and... know, Dimitri, you did those nights for me. Okay. <laughs> Not <laughs> just for <laughs> Whoever was there. And I, I, I remember no at that for place, they, uh, when everyone was dancing, <laughs> you would get uh, like a resonance, a bounce, and my needle just kept hopping on the record oh, now on serato it didn't matter because it would just sound like more of a skip rather than like a complete cut but yeah. i do remember just being like i don't know what the hell I gotta to do say, guys um you mentioned umbria and over the years i always used to say to myself those fourth and fifth levels were so jam-packed we could feel the floors bounce yeah 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 all the time i would say it's only a matter of time where one of these floors is going to just give yeah I would, I would i would suggest a uh, special analysis of uh, <laughs> <laughs> the second that uh, oh, well uh, Dimitri, couldn't you, you couldn't What's you up? wait couldn't you wait the needle down or does that uh, not what work? you're supposed to do is put them on on surgical tubes like in, in big clubs and big rooms uh, the 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 twelve hundred was literally on rubber bands. Yeah, so it, bands. yeah, exactly. The the, the so turntable can, was sitting on like a like a belt that was rubber, so it was supposed yeah. to bounce so that you didn't get that. But uh, it only helps so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it, ha okay. it has to be done right, or else yeah. it's gonna go nuts. Because I remember when they I should, when they I should was, have invested in like some better equipment, considering how much money it was they your made equipment, Dimitri, nice. or was Zombies? no? It was it was it was their turntables, but my the rest no. yeah 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 i remember manny used to take the the record cleaner remember the record cleaner you guys yeah. some of you guys don't even know what that is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we would take a record cleaner and wedge it in between the turntables so i can scratch on it because you couldn't scratch on the surgical tubes the yeah would be all over the place right, try right. To scratch yeah. them. Hey, so manny would hey chris it for me or, or wedge the the record cleaner in there and that's the only way i could scratch on on turntables yeah. like that me and Chris had an incident. We were setting up at, what was that, Whiskey Park? It was that restaurant where I had to bring my own equipment. Yes. Um, and we couldn't get my, my equipment. For some reason, we, took, we were trying to tie into the system there, and we get such feedback. It was, oh, yeah. like, it was like five minutes left till the people, like, the place was full. We still had, still had no music. We were like, I was literally sweating. Oh. I, I got yeah, so, so it. So how do you, how do you yeah. solve problems like this? Like you have to like I got you say you start isolating things. You start isolating yeah. your mixer. You're isolating your player. Your, your, your microphone. I don't know how we fix it, but like we it was playing. There was no volume on. Music was coming out of us out of the system. To this day, I think it was a ghost. I think it was. Like, I, had, I, had bring, like, I brought my equipment home. I had my mother take the mati off of it. It was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Peter, I got a, I got a story for us uh, real quickly. You talk about, you know, what happens in a situation with equipment. You mentioned Whiskey Park. And back in the early days of Sigma, we had a an event night on a long weekend uh, holiday in February. And uh, DJ Nico Garufalis, who's not with us tonight, but he'll be with us in an upcoming segment, if I can just mention this story, where he was the, the, the DJ for the night for this event. And there was a sort of a snowstorm that night. And we had a pretty big night with a big list on the guest list. And um, something happened with DJ Nico's equipment because of the snowstorm. He couldn't get to his equipment. And huh. we were, you know, it was like 1030. There was a line out the door waiting to get in. 
and he had no equipment. I'll let him tell the story the next time he comes on the segment, but I think we had to track you down, Peter, to borrow oh, your really? equipment, and he had to come to your house to borrow no your way. equipment <laughs> and drive to where, wherever you were at the time, only to bring your equipment uh -huh. and come back at 1130 so that he can spin, but from 1030 to 1130, there was no DJ at the night, and there was like 300 <laughs> oh, people man. at Whiskey uh, Park. I don't even remember but, that. But you came oh, through man. for him at the time, and thankfully you were Dude, available. I, I, and I, would, I would come through for anyone because I always wanted someone to come through for me. <laughs> That's how it goes. Uh, I've had gigs like that where, 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 where stuff isn't working, and, it, and it's like Thriller said, man, it's like there's this pit, it, you know, this feeling in your stomach because all eyes are on you, and, and all the pressure's on you, and then you just got to go process of elimination. I remember doing a gig one time at the Park Plaza Hotel. I was doing a wedding, and uh, I was I was with a band, and um, I blew both my speakers, right at at a peak time. Like the the, the place is jumping, you know, everyone's on the dance floor, and then all of a sudden, both my speakers popped, and I um I ended up jumping behind the drum set. And I just was like, da, da, and I started playing the drums and I could play this one riff, like do, do, bop, do, 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 bop. And people were dancing. And I was, and I was talking to, I think Thanos was my roadie, right? And I'm like, Thanos, plug my speakers into the band speakers. And I'm like, do, do, da, do, do, da. And Thanos is like, what? I go, plug my speakers into the band speakers. So he unplugs from my mixing board. He plugs into the band speakers and they had like subs and all kinds. And all of a sudden I was like, boom. And I jump back on and the Jeez. band looks up and they're like, what are you doing playing with her? I'll speak. Like, oh, my speakers blew. Shut up. Like, well, I got to play. So that was, Dude, that, that must be so stressful. Like as somebody with OCD, like I would like yeah. just go I nuts. If, like, my, I just, my stuff didn't work. I just, what I did was I grabbed the, the microphone from the, um, from the band. And I was like, all right, get your hands up. Just start clapping. I was just being, you know, just, and they were like, okay. So I was like, clap, we're going to clap. And then I grabbed the mic, I leaned it on me. I was like, keep those hands clapping. Do, do, bop, do, do. And I'm going, Thanos, plug my freaking speakers into the band. So that was the, probably one of the craziest things I've done. That's lots of them, lots of craziness. That's you awesome. Know? My God. So, all right. So, so we got, we got a lot of good stories. Um, there's, uh, there, there's one, well, I mean, there's one story that stands out for me that I, but you know what? It, it I don't know if it has to do. It doesn't really have to do with DJ. But I was with I was with Chris and John. Were you drunk, Gotti? So. Were you drunk? I was a little bit drunk. <laughs> you know what? All right, screw it. We'll tell the story very quickly. It, it doesn't have to do with DJing, but I was with Chris and John, so so it pertains to it does. the DJs. So yeah. this is this is about the mindset of like the audience and the mindset of like how you are in a club and. Let me just tell you that this story is going to leave you thinking, always have a positive and confident mindset. A positive and confident mindset will get you everywhere in life. Are you talking about the playhouse? So, <laughs> so, so we were hanging out at a buddy's house. I'm, I'm going to tell this story very quickly. We were hanging out at a buddy's house in Brighton. And it was a bunch of us. And we were waiting for Chris and John to show up. So we're all drinking, drinking, drinking. And I, I just got back from Greece, like maybe a day or two before. And I had like these big, thick, like cigarettes with no filters. They were like just these big, weird cigarettes, no filters. And I was like hardcore back then smoking like everything sure and anything. A, you sure that wasn't a joint? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so, so then my buddy rolls a joint, which kind of looked like these Greek cigarettes. So in my drunken state, I grabbed the joint, I grabbed the Greek cigarettes and I put them in this little cigarette case that I, that I thought was so cool to carry around because I was so cool back then. So like I closed it up, but in my drunken state, I didn't remember putting the joint in. So we head to Playhouse and uh, I'm with Chris, John and, and our other buddies. And I'm just ripping it up. I was all over the place. I was stealing girls' pocketbooks. I was stealing people's jackets. I was running around, like, throwing it to other people. People, like, like just swearing and yelling at me. So then, like, I'm in the middle of the dance floor, and I bust out my Greek cigarettes because I'm so cool. I'm international. And I put 
the cigarette in my mouth and I light it up. This is when you could smoke in the clubs. So I light it up and I'm smoking and I'm having a great time. And this girl's like yelling and screaming at me because I'm being an asshole. And all of a sudden, like five bouncers, boom, converge on me. And they grab the cigarette and they grab me and they're holding me. And I'm like, you motherfuckers, you don't know what you're doing, man. That's a Greek cigarette, man. <laughs> they're like, no, man, that's that's marijuana. I was like, you fucking stupid moron. That's a Greek cigarette. You don't even know what a cigarette is. I was so convinced. I, I was watching this. This is exactly <laughs> how it went down. I it's was like, so convinced, 100%, no doubt in my mind, that that was a Greek cigarette, that I was screaming at the bouncers. And what ends up, long story short, they hand it back to me and they go, thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> I will never forget I mean, that dude, because I remember seeing them. They were, they were yeah, sniffing remember, it. They were trying to figure it out. Yeah. And I one of them goes, the two bouncers were like, you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why guys, if anything happens in your life, if anything happens, just have 100% conviction and confidence in what you are saying and you could do anything oh well, you know the saying goes uh what's the saying like it's 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 only or it's it's true if you believe it right? yeah exactly it, that's what i'm saying, saying. if if i for one second believe that i had the joint if i for one second believe that i smoked that joint i would have been out of there in two seconds <laughs> but i did not know that joint was there I truly believed it was a Greek cigarette. And I was like, you guys don't even fucking know what a Greek cigarette is. That's a Greek cigarette. Give me back my cigarette. And they're like, okay, sorry, sir. And uh, have a good night. That's called the power of Greek per persuasion. <laughs> that, that was such a funny night. That, that was a funny memory. I mean, oh, yeah. like I said, I'm sorry. It doesn't have to do with DJs, but I was with two DJs. I like, it. So. I like the story. If you think you're right, you're right. If you think you're wrong, you're wrong. You were right. That's buddy. it. That, that's it, man. Just Greek just be, be confident in everything you do. <laughs> yeah, that was right, a memorable so, night, man. That was a fun night. So let's well, we had a lot of fun nights back party. then. We had a lot you of guys, fun nights. You guys all went to the uh, the Greek concerts back then, right? In the after parties? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's that's the next question I want to get into. Like so Those were fun, man. Uh, you, you said that earlier, and I was thinking about those. We used to do all the after parties, and um, those were a blast. You know? Yeah. Those the concerts would be at, at the Roxy. The concert would be at the Roxy and the after party with Aria, right? So you just walk across. <laughs> yeah, the street. it was well. Usually it was at it was at the Wang, the oh, Orpheum. Yeah. If it was, it was usually the Wang or the Orpheum. If it was at the Roxy, the party would stay there all night. But if it was at the Wang or the Orpheum, um, it would we would you know we would try to bring it to Aria. But there was again there was kind of two groups. There was there was um, the Roxy group. There was Manos, and then there was you know Aleko and and me. That would do the after parties with Harry Iliopoulos. You guys know Harry, right? Yeah. yeah. So Harry's dad would bring most of the, you know, the the artists back then from I don't know Ana Visi to Alkeo and everyone in between, and um, and he, you know, it was always there was always two teams. It was always across the street or next door to Aria. Right. And you never know who you get, and you know, and you and, and everyone would promote. I saw some of the flies you guys were posting, like the official after party. We always <laughs> do the same thing. Everyone had the official after party, and it was always like, "Where are we going? Right? We going here? We going there?" And you know, so, as DJs, was, did you guys find uh, the after parties were something that set set apart from other Greek nights you've done? Were Greek were Greek after par Greek concert after parties better, worse? Were they similar? How do you guys perceive that? It was similar. They were just a good Greek night, you know. Yeah. It was really cool to have the artists show up there if you can get them there. That was the best part. And um, what we used to do was, you know, I used to partner up, obviously, with Harry and Aleko. And I remember one night, Harry's stressing it out. He was like, I don't know if we're going to be busy, dude. You know, you know, Manos is pumping it across the street and we're pumping it <laughs> next door to Aria. I don't know if we're going to be busy. And I'm like, dude, relax. I was like, it's going to be fine. He's like, how do you know? And I was like, wait, man, isn't your father bringing... You know, at the time, I think it was Vici. Isn't your father bringing out a Vici? He's like, yeah. I'm like, then why don't you let me just get on the microphone, dude? At the end of the night, just go, hey, guess what? I'll see you at Aria. He's yeah. like, that's brilliant. Will you do that? I was yeah. like, why would I not do that? <laughs> so I'm behind stage. I'm hanging out with Anna Vici. She's like, hey, what's up? I'm like, you're going to come to the after party. I'm talking to her. I'm like, Dipla. And she used to have, was it her that had the, uh, 
the crazy hair drummer. I don't know if you guys, this dude had like all blonde dreadlocks and he was like a rock star. You know, everyone was like just pumped to see this kid. So I go behind stage. I used to do it all the time. And as soon as she would say, you know, that's it, that's going to wrap it up. I would just pick up the mic and I would say, guys, we'll see you next door at Aria, the official after party. Anavis is going to be here. Everyone's going to be there. But we never had that in contract. We never were guaranteed. So that was a little like, I hope she shows and, up, you know? And Peter. So we would go to Aria and, and sure enough, you know, you, you're doing a concert. There was about a thousand people that would show up to the concert. But the, the kids that would come over was about 350, 400. It wasn't a thousand, you know, all of everyone coming over. And, uh, and we'd be sweating it, man, and sweating it and hoping. And we'd have, like, the middle blocked off. We'd have name tags saying, reserve for Anna VC. <laughs> and we're like, you know, praying <laughs> she's coming, you know. And then uh, Thanos would be DJ, and I'd be at the front door with Aleko, like, you know, is she coming? Is she coming? You know, we'd be busting Harry's chops, like, go over there. Tell her she's got to come here. And every time we did it, thank God, every time the artist would show up. And it was like... We were just sweating bullets, but all the time, we just because there's no contract, there was no guarantees that would show up, you know. And, and how that, how does the night go for you as a DJ? Do you play a lot of her music, for example? Um, like you're gonna pump some good a, on no, a VC if on a VC is there? Not, not a lot, but you would play three or four songs, and she would love it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? She would go nuts, and people would go nuts, but you wouldn't play like an hour of it, you know. You, you, but you would, you would definitely play the, the anthems, the bombs. And she had so many big hits that was easy to do. I remember one time we did the after party at M80, which was off the beaten path from the Orpheum, right? It's, yeah, that's it's like all like, the way up. You know, because the wing, you're parking and you just walk right over to Aria. So we're at M80 and, you know, everyone's coming up to me because like the official after party, Algeo's coming to M80. And I was like, is, is Algeo here? Is Algeo here? And, and we're like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So finally, I, um, it was like 1.30 and the club's closing at 2. He wasn't there. I was like, man, everyone's expecting us. You know, he's going to be, he's going to be here. And I just grabbed my drink. And I was, you know, I don't know, you guys remember the M80 booth? Like you had to come up in a ladder. It was tight yeah, as yeah. shit. You're sitting up in this little booth like this. I'm standing like this. The light guy's next to me. So I grab my drink. I grab a Nike and I'm like, and I just put my drink up, but he wasn't even there. <laughs> and the whole place is like, oh, Gail's here, right? <laughs> like, yeah, everybody's like, probably assuming he's somewhere they can't yeah. see him. Dude, I'm like, Gail, 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 thanks for coming by there. <laughs> right? And I guarantee you there's a bunch of people that were like, no, he was there. He was there. I saw him. <laughs> Dude, everyone was like, and they're all looking around, and I'm just going like this. I tell the light guy, blacken the room out, right? He blackens the room out. I'm like, where did he go, right? And next thing you know, it's 1.55 in the morning, and guess who shows up? Algeo, right? Algeo. And I'm like, what are you doing at one? He goes, Tio da I'm like, who? <laughs> He's like, what? Right? So I get him in. I, this time. Wait, I isn't Algeo from Boston? Am I mistaken? Algeo's from New Hampshire originally. Oh. Wow. Oh, he's New Hampshire. I had no idea. Yeah. So I get him and I bring him in the DJ booth so everyone can see him. And I'm like, this dude's been here all night, I swear. <laughs> so he's in the DJ booth, we're drinking, and then two o'clock we played, we ended up with one of his songs, you know what I mean? And it was just, it was crazy. But those nights, those nights were stressful because you got all that stress of bringing the act to the room with no guarantees, and, but and, you're promising everyone that you're going to do it. And you know? Peter, back then, concerts were held during the weeknights. They weren't weekends. You exactly. Know, concerts that came to Boston were either exactly. Monday through Boston, Thursday. Boston always aggravated me because of that. Like, I always hated the fact that we can never get a big name concert on like a Friday or a Saturday night. I, I, like, whenever we did a Saturday night or something, it was like such a special treat. And I was like, why can't we do this? But they were never available. Yeah. Because New York. Available, that's the problem. They would yeah. go to New, they would go to New York first. Yeah, and then yeah. Come here, you know. Mm. Yeah, but it's like you know what? Boston is a freaking good scene. Like I, I, I can't believe like we couldn't get more weekend concerts. But anyway, I mean, what, it is what it is. And you know, once COVID's over, we're gonna be doing. We're gonna restart this stuff. We're gonna re get this stuff going, and hopefully, you know, people like it. People respond. Everybody here is going to be involved 
as long as you want to be. And we're going to like, gonna we're going to try to bring it back, man. We're going to try to bring it back. Adi, what, what do we call it? The first Greek super spreader we're going to have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, uh, Peter told me a story and you know, Peter share that story and end it with the line of like, in the future, we're going to look back and say, we were the first people to do this. So tell yeah, the story I'll, I'll and then name, I'll tell you I'll my version. On names, right? But we were at, um, <laughs> this weekend, I went to a, a party in Boston and I get invited to go to this party and, I, and, 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 you know, it was a birthday party. So I go to this party and um, there was a band there, right? And everyone knows the band members, right? So I'm like, these are all my boys. I'm like, oh, what's up? You know? So I walk in there and um, everyone had a mask on. You know, and not everyone, most people had a mask on in the beginning. And then, and then within like, I don't know, an hour later, no one's wearing a mask. Everyone's Greek dancing. Everyone's holding hands, dancing on top of each other. It was, I guess it was a, it was a, it was a Greek super spreader. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but, but Peter didn't say that. He goes, he goes in the future, we're all going to look back and be like, we're the first Greeks who like ventured out after COVID and this and that. And I was like, or Peter. You could in the future be like, we were that outbreak that everybody was talking about. A super spreader. And he's like, so we so, were basically a Greek super spreader of We're going to wear the t-shirt. But it felt, it felt like you were at a speakeasy. You know, I remember when, you know, you read about the prohibition and those clubs <laughs> underground, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt like it was at a restaurant and the owner was kind of bugging out. He was like looking out the window all the time. He was like, is it <laughs> And we're going nuts. We're just jamming up a storm in there, and it was awesome, dude. So, the, so the like, first oh, event, is... the first event we do, we're gonna call it the Greek Super Spreader event. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're gonna call it. I said, Adi, the first event we do, we're calling it the Greek Super Spreader, and it's gonna be packed. That's how we're gonna go down. That's gonna be yeah, awesome. That was fun. Yeah, but man, I can't wait because once once this shit is over, or you know, safe, like we're gonna we're gonna reintroduce. The con I mean, there's concerts, but we're going to reintroduce it in a way that it's going to be like the old school because we're going to have the people from the old school. We're going to have you guys. Everybody's going to be involved. Anything that me and Foti do, everybody who's here and hopefully, you know, some others, but like everybody who's here is absolutely 100 percent involved. Like this is the team. This is these are the people who put Greek nights on the map and like we want to bring it back we want to just have a good time and we can and there's a lot of opportunities there's a lot of cool things that we're going to do there was a lot of cool things that we had you know planned be uh, you know before covid hit um and you know it, it's going to happen so you know everybody it's just good. prepare it's for that because good. if you think you're retired you're coming out of retirement if you <laughs> think you're only doing weddings you're coming back and you're doing pumping Greek nights. Like it's going to be good. And, and we're going to, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. So, so let, let me, let me kind of get into, I mean, I'll say last question, but you know, take your time and, and whatever, but like, is everybody here still involved in DJing in one way or another? Are you guys, is anybody here like completely done with it? Like, like I, I know the answer to some of you guys, but let, let me hear from, from you guys. Like, I'm done. Like, I'm done with it. Yeah, but what? <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> Yo, wow. what did I just say? I'm out. <laughs> what did I just like, say? I'm out. Sarthoi ki pera kada sa parap to vraki, and you guys are coming to my night. You made me nervous when you're like everybody's gonna come back and DJ. I'm like, I, I'm gonna. All I know is like, I'm gonna play like. I like to move it. And... You can play the doom bag, John. John, bring the yeah. doom bag. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you can do the Dude, doom come bag. on. Like, all right. So you won't do like a 10-minute set with, with you yeah, and Chris? Do, like, they still, do they still have that then in the, those, uh, no, those Pioneer CD players? Uh, uh, You're asking me? I don't think you know them. anything. Well, what I, I'd have to use someone Serato. And I'd have yeah. to, you'd have to make <laughs> a Chris <laughs> play. You guys have to do it. You'll jump right in. <laughs> you'll jump right in you guys will jump right in i got M manny had me go down to uh atlantic city right before everything stopped and he's like oh come down and play i was like but i haven't played in a year he's like no oh, come down and play and he's a you know real club right so i walk in there and there's four pioneer cdjs 
And if you want to jump in, I just felt right at home. You guys will, you yeah, guys you get it. Right yeah, you, you, you get right into it. You, you know, what, you, the, got, the you more, guys are ruining my marketing right now. The more <laughs> part would be not so much the equipment, but like the the song, like the the location of the music, right? Because when we were spinning, and the same goes for all you guys, right? Like, like I knew exactly where this track was and which you know page of the CD book or which which crate of records it was in and exactly where oh. it was. And I knew like it was a, like everything was just like, you know, organized in a certain way where you could just like kind of start playing right now. It's like when I try to I've tried to do it a couple of times with Thrilla and it's like, I don't know. It doesn't feel right to like search for a song on a computer. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's different. It does if it's your computer. It's weird to search on someone else's though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like your yeah. your crates on your Serato is very like similar to your CD book or your record crates. Yeah, yeah. But me jumping into yours, I would feel very yeah, weird. Yeah. Peter yeah, does it to me. When sometimes. I see when I yeah. see Dimitri at a gig and I go up to him, I go, fill me up a crate and go take a break. And he yeah. fills me up a bag of goodies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but if we if we tell you like, you know, a month or two ahead, like can't you just put 10 minutes of something together so we could just announce you guys are I think, being there i think i could do that yeah okay. for you audience for the greek super spreader event dude, I, <laughs> I mean, dude, for the community i would be so upset personally on a personal level if you guys refused this i'm not refusing dude <laughs> but go Who refuse me chris switch. <laughs> but John, you gotta be there too. Yeah, man, I'm in. I'm in. John's gonna play the doom bag, man. Yeah, we play doom bag. Yeah, whatever. Right. Even if you wow. do a, a DJ Khaled, like, yeah, all right, <laughs> like whatever. Just do something. <laughs> we the freakers. Just say that. <laughs> we'll I'm gonna, be, I'm we'll gonna be introduce there. you we'll guys be, with we'll that. I'm gonna introduce you guys with that. <laughs> 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 That's awesome, man. All right, but uh, like, uh, all right, so John and Chris are kind of not involved at the moment in DJing, right? But everybody else is, right? I not say at all. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't say kind of. <laughs> not kind of, not at all. Equipment, man. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm not really in the rotation. I'll just come out once a year and I'll play a gig just because I love it and I'm passionate about it. So, you know what I mean? I'm down for that. I'll come out. Well, yeah, I mean, Peter, you know, the the original the original plan was you were basically the the guy, so you better be like ready to to well, come I'm, back. Oh man, we were gonna we were we were setting up encore, so I was I was you know yeah. I felt like that dude from the Incredibles. Where's my suit, woman? You know I mean? like, <laughs> my suit, woman. I'm going back out. You know, no man, it's gonna happen. So, it's it, it's absolutely I mean, gonna happen, but uh. Seven, Mani, Thrilla. I know you guys are still. Yeah, I'm. I, uh, yeah. I can go. I, I, I'm still active. I, stu I still do a lot of mobile events, weddings, whatnot. I still do music production as, uh, uh, as a profession. People pay me for it. I do like uh, remixes and mashups and stuff. Like, and we're, we're gonna have some on uh, Boston Greeks as well because. Yeah. So like, I'll do like, I work with like hip hop crews and like do music for them. Like they dance at the Celtics and stuff. And like they'll go on tour with different artists and I do the music for them. They go on TV and stuff. So I do, I'm very active doing that. I, obviously it tailed off with, with COVID now. So I still do a lot of that. I still do a lot of Greek mixes and, and I'm doing those because I like him. And like, yeah. I feel like I'm almost carrying that tradition on that. You know, I grew up listening to Peter's stuff and, you know, Chris was doing it. And then like, even and I was doing it and I still I'm still putting them out and you know I have a pretty active uh SoundCloud so soundcloud.com slash thriller music and it's like loaded up with uh you know all actually I put I just started my a mix cloud where I put all my old Greek uh mix CDs on there oh, uh, that's awesome. with Chris and like so you go to mix cloud slash DJ thriller uh or you go to DJ thriller.com and you can see all you can get links to go to my see my um my mix CDs, but I just put one out like two weeks ago. I think I sent it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, awesome, awesome mix. Yeah, yeah so like you, you I think, and I think I'm, I still put those out because I love it. I like I I I I I do a I do a cool intro. I get all the hot tracks in Greece, the hot remixes. I make a couple remixes. I throw it on there. They're not they're not a, they're not a full CD anymore. Like thirty minutes. I mean, yeah. that's what I think the people's attention is. Yeah, there. yeah. The attention deficit disorder. Yeah. The youth. So, and it's and I think it keeps keeps me uh, you know relevant. To like what's going on and it keep you know and it's my passion too so i'll always be doing those even like people like oh you're doing this for promotion i go i'm just i go look i go 
I'll be doing these because I like to do them, not because you know someone's paying me to do. Right. Do them. Yeah, so that's awesome. I that's still make a CD once a year, once every two years, just like Thriller said, just to keep up with the music. I'll hit all you guys up usually. I'm like, yo, yo, send me some tracks. Thriller, you hook me up. You know, you guys all hook me up, and I'll just, I like music, so I can't stop. I'm gonna keep on making mix CDs or whatever. Not CDs anymore. Mix tracks, mix you know plays, lists, yeah. whatever you want to call them. Yeah, man. Why Forever, not? You know, so you you guys have a skill. That's it's like a, a, a an amazing and like a necessary skill for for people getting together and having fun like what what is a party without a dj like what is a club without a dj like it doesn't exist so it you know i know dimitri is is still involved in like weddings and stuff like that right so no yeah. problem with you no i'm i'm willing to to do this i just you know all i ask is for some ample notice on a date because no the day before dates. is what we're doing what's that yeah <laughs> day before, 24 hour notice. no I, no absolutely that there's yeah. notice and and money you you you're in right oh yeah i'm definitely in i mean yeah. like doing clubs and and the greek nights i miss doing those yeah dude um, that's what i'm saying like 2000 around 2018 end of 2018 i like missed just djing in boston in general because i was doing private events right. and so i did start i did have a residency at um bostonia public house which was amazing because they just let me play whatever I wanted. So I just went with whatever the crowd wanted that night. One night was like all Latin another night was all house. And then some nights would just be a mix of everything. Oh, that's cool. Um, so those were like uh, the funnest nights for me just cause like, I actually don't like when there's a place that says you can only play this yeah. cause that limits your creativity. The most fun is when you can just go on and go in and out of different genres and like mixing, you know, just beats that you never thought would go together and they just flow so nice. That's, that was the best. And um, so, yeah, like I, I tr like I, I really wanted to get back into the club scene a little bit. So I was doing that and then COVID stopped that. Well, so Mom, at home, yeah. We, we had a good run with you um, as a, your residency with us at Splash for a while. That was fun. A lot of fun. Right. Even though yeah. it, was, it was labeled as a, was it, did we label it as a Greek night, but it was, I don't remember. I like. I, I think, just remember. I, I remember it was on Greek. on the website all the time, but like I don't remember what we labeled it as. I think you just played whatever you wanted th those nights. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I played everything. The whole uh, point. Definitely hip hop, and, house, Greek, well, reggaeton. I, I, I gotta mention. I gotta mention this though, right? Didn't we also do a release party for you, Peter, at Splash when you were doing your um your show? Yeah, yeah, we did. That's right. It was at Splash. We did a, Manolo, uh, Manolo was there too, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. We we did a throwback night at Splash too. I I don't know. We, you guys I remember the throwback night? There. That was an awesome night. I rem I remember we did it. We hosted with Peter, with his film crew for his show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Flip in Boston, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I the I was, I was in that. We had to sign like waivers to be on camera. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Everyone that walked in had to had to. Uh, uh, well, you know what they did when you did an event like that? They put a sign on the door by walking through the doors. You're, you're yeah, saying, you, you can't yeah. have everybody yeah. sign. It's just too yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that was, was fun. Good. I have footage of that. I got to get you guys that footage from Splash. Yeah, I got to find that. 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 was good. I, 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 I think Dimitri did uh, nights for us at, Fla at Splash too, right? Yeah, I did. I remember Splash, all sorts of girls ocean. asking me who the DJ was and <laughs> do I have his number? And I was like, bitch, <laughs> stay away. <Yeah. laughs> I didn't want to blow up your spot, but they made me jealous. <laughs> but we, no, had, we had a lot of good times, man. I remember, I remember too, Splash was very open format. Like George just said, mm. you know, we label, you could label a night however you want it, but just play whatever you feel. But that, that's the, that's the point of the like, best nights, man. Yeah. If, if me, if me and Forty do a night where we get a DJ, we want the DJ to choose right? because the DJ is the expert. The DJ knows like, we're not going to be like, you can only play this. Like, dude, Get the crowd oh, moving, I, I gotta, make the gotta, night successful, and that's your job. So, like, I, I think it's stupid for anybody to be like, you have to do this and you have to do that. Like, I got a, I got a quick story with with uh, seven Dimitri. We had remember in the alley one night we were doing nights. Oh the yeah. Alley, and uh, the very first night that we kicked off, it was like just a regular night, and we walked into an opening of a night with like overcapacity. 
which we never expected and it was just free flow you had a form sweet thing. yeah that, those, yeah. Those, that was a good night that was like uh they had sort of a dying friday night and then we took it over and that first opening night was chaos <laughs> yeah so yeah, you never really know good. right yeah but again that was open format i think what makes you guys pretty good promoters is you never dictated what we needed to do but, yeah. but you guys are, are the experts at but there your, are what you do out there who are not like that who no. will tell you yeah. like we, this is we, what we're trying to cater to but you never we you do never what that. we do and you do what you do and what well, you do is play music and you right. get the crowd going well, i don't think a promoter should ever tell a dj well, for us, what to play. Was, we, we always allocated drink tickets to the djs and then that, <laughs> and everything was fine no there's a lot of a lot of good times man the, the thing about this group right here is that, I, you know, we talked about some, some horror events, but it's like, it's like 99% like just amazing, awesome memories. Like if it wasn't for every single person here, like I, I would be missing so much of what makes me me. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have gone out to Greek nights that have gone out to whatever nights you guys have done, private parties, weddings, whatever it is you guys do. There's so much about what you do that that kind of affects people. I, I, for one, am somebody who has been greatly affected by what each and every one of you have done. It kind of everything molds the person. It, uh, people are made up by memories. Like everything about a person no, is a memory. That's so true. it's like and, you guys have music, created memories, right? Music has a lot of that memorabilia in it, man. Like we hear songs and you know where you were, what time, yes. where you first heard it, you know, and the memories and, and, and we, you know, all of us hear it from people. We bump into people and say, oh, I was at that gig. I was out here. I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys a funny, crazy story talking about memories. I was at um, committee in Boston a few weeks ago, right? I was going to say, um, this is a recent story. This is recent. I was at a committee a few weeks ago at Boston, and I'm, I'm trying to get a table to sit with my wife, and they're like, you know, uh, we only have a you know, seat at the bar, and, and we were, you know, getting breakfast, and I was like, oh, I don't want to sit at the bar. They're like, you know, you have to wait another half an hour. I was like, All right, I really don't want to sit at the bar, so I'm really <laughs> trying not to sit at the bar, and I'm, you know, and I was like, do I call my buddy George owns it? You know, do I text George Abu And I was like, I want to bother him. How, so I was how like, are you uh, waiting for a table, Peter? So listen, right? Uh, so, you know, I, I, I'm like, I'm not going to, you know, pull rank and I mean, you know, pull uh, name drop and call my friends. Uh, so I'm just trying to avoid sitting at the bar. So I end up sitting at the bar and I was like, Pete, <laughs> just relax, sit at the bar, enjoy yourself. So I sit at the bar, this kid comes over. And, you know, have you guys been to committee? It's, it's, they have Greek food there, right? So, so, I, so I said, uh, so I, you know, the kid behind the bar, I said, you guys have uh, frappe? And, and he goes, yeah, yeah, I got frappe. And he goes to me, and let's see, he right? So we start, I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, where are you from? And we start talking. And he starts saying, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, I'm from Samos. And I'm like, you're from Samos, right? So now, because Amani's from Samos, right? I know, I know a, lot of, a lot of Greeks, right? So we start talking. Next thing you know, George, right? This kid was at the wedding I was DJing in, in Samos when you wow. were there. Wow. All right. So oh. I, I'm doing a wedding. His kid goes to me, dude, I was at a wedding one time with this American DJ from Boston, and he made us all jump in the pool. I was like, that was me. <laughs> he wow. was like, what? I was like, you were there. And I, nobody else knew that, you know, like, because at the end of this wedding, everyone jumped in the pool. All the bridesmaids grew up. The whole party jumped in the pool. Were you so, there, George? Yeah, yeah it was my was cousin's there. wedding. Oh, that's awesome. Did you so jump in the his pool cousin called me up. And yeah, I in jumped in Samos, <laughs> And he's like, Pete, I want you to fly to Samos and DJ in my wedding. I'm like, are you nuts? So I called Mani up. I was like, dude, I'm not bringing equipment. I'm not, you know, he's like, don't worry about it. I'll take care of everything. I'll, I know kids there. We'll get you, you know, Pioneer DJ, you know, equipment. So I, I fly out there. I'm doing this kid's wedding. And sure enough, at this kid's bartending. And I didn't want to sit at the bar. You know what I mean? And, and then we hit it off like this. I became friends with the kid. And it's just crazy. It's just crazy how the world goes. But those stories are just, it's just, mm, you know, love, you're, one, you're one person away from that, you know? I love those so, stories, man. I, I just love hearing about it. I love, I love that connection. And, you know, I've always been, you know, music obviously plays like a huge role in my life. And it's like, you guys, you guys are like the soundtrack of so many people's lives. It's like, it's like such a cool thing to do. And I just think it's so cool. And that's why I'm so upset when Chris and John 
just drop that mic on me. And like, I don't care, man. I don't care what you're saying. If I have to come to your house and drag you out, you guys are coming. That's all we'll I'm saying. We'll be, we're in, man. All right. Yeah, all right. man. Don't make like- me bring a Greek cigarette and go nuts on you. Dude, just put the pacifier in the mouth and you'll be fine. Hey. <laughs> well, guys, guys, uh, this was, again, awesome, amazing. Like, the stories, everything about what we're talking about is just so it, – it, it just – it's so nostalgic for me personally. And I know there's so many people out there that just, they love hearing so, about, you know, this is, this is every Greek in Boston's history. Like I, every Greek in Boston has gone out to one of the nights that you guys have been part of. Like everybody has a story. You guys are literally part of thousands of Greeks in Boston's stories. So it's like, it's, it's just such an amazing thing. And I'm so, I'm so happy we have like episode number two to 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 play with are you are you signaling me yeah Kulti? you I want, want to I say want, something yeah, i want to say something so to your to your point on your comment aries for those that are listening to the podcast is that we're loading photo galleries of all these major nights that we've captured over the years where every single one of our of our djs and close friends have been a part of mm-hmm. so for those that listen to the podcast it will be followed up with the photo galleries that thankfully Ari saved and remembered to save there's not just thousands but tens of thousands of photos of those nights that we, we've captured and videos like we were talking and, about uh videos greek well. star performing i got the video of that we were talking about uh so many things i got uh me spilling the the beer on chris's <laughs> <laughs> cds i i got the oh. video man like and you got my you got i my think new i mix puked on there? what you got, new greek, you got my new greek mix on there on the I, website? I don't have it yet but it's coming don't worry i'm All actually right. gonna i'm actually gonna promote that with this episode all right. Uh, and I Send think I puked. I think sick. I puked in John's back seat once. I'm trying that, to cross promote him, man. That's to <laughs> John, so, yeah. did I screw up your car? I think I did. I wouldn't remember. It's I have a, I have a flashback <laughs> of you being real pissed and going into a gas station to get cleanup stuff. But anyway, <laughs> um, we all have we all have like these these amazing memories, and you know these guys are so involved in these greek memories um you know we're gonna post all those picture galleries so you guys can reminisce but everybody out there has a story or a memory from something you guys were involved in and i'm so happy that we could gather and i'm so happy like this is episode two and this is this is not the last like we're gonna keep doing this um there's more djs um that we're gonna bring on but like this is like the core group and hopefully these guys are part of every single episode we do because they they are such a, a, an important part of that so i just want to say personally thanks guys so much again dimitri arthur george john peter chris thank you guys man we appreciate so much your time we appreciate you guys hanging out with us and telling us your story everybody out there from the feedback we got on the last episode, I know they, they love it. And this one's going to be even better, I think. Um, and just thanks. I, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Anybody want to say anything, closing, anything? Thank you guys for yeah, thank, you. Thank, thank you, you guys for putting it all together. Yeah, man. It, it, I mean, this, this is necessary. I think this is like a real like needed thing. Like for me, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if it's like it's therapeutic, you, but like, I love talking to you guys and hearing these stories. It, it, it's just such a cool thing. And I know everybody out there does too. Foti? I, think you should, Fot, I think you guys should name the episode and this one should be called the Greek cigarette. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> or I don't want to sit at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? That, that's a, that's a, you know what? <laughs> if, this, if this ends up being like a long series, this that's a that's actually a good idea, man. We should we should name each one with some sort of a <laughs> highlight of the of the of the real. Absolutely. Or or uh, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> Chris and John. I'm out. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, sir. Uh, Ari, this has been great. I want no to thank, no I want to thank all the guys <laughs> for uh, taking their time to be with us because obviously, you know, there's a lot going on and 
it's great to bring us back together, even for these short moments and just, you know, reminisce and go through the stories and just, um, you know, just have a good time with it. So I want to thank all of you guys for uh, being a part of this. Yeah, dude, everybody. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Like I have such a good time. I don't care if one person watches this or not. I personally had such a good time and I thank you guys. And you know what? This is uh, Greek DJ 2 Electric Boogaloo. So look out for part three, which I don't know, probably about a month or so. And uh, we may have new faces. I don't know. But if we do, awesome. These guys will be back, hopefully. And we're going we're gonna to do it again. So everybody out there, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. You guys have comments, feedback. Let us know because these guys also want to know. Um, all the all the fan mail from the girls like you can calm down a little bit because i got flooded before and it was it was almost like new kids got with backstreet boys and went on tour and they're like that's the feedback we were getting like all these girls were like oh yeah i remember this those but, damn bots <laughs> but <laughs> thank you everybody for watching and stay tuned for the next episode coming probably about a month or so thank you guys thank you so much yes. everybody have an awesome night thank you again and we will Thanks, do it guys. once more. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Stay safe.